Eating that rattle bug. They just ain't very big. <laughs> Come on. <Get> him. <laughs> Got him by the chinny chin chin. <laughs> I always said, with a rattle trap, if it's got fins, if it's got fins and scales, it'll eat a rattle trap. Rattle trap bass. <laughs> one of the one of the great baits of all time is the Bill Lewis rattle trap, and it catches fish of all sizes, from pound and a half up to. In 1987, March 23rd, 1987, 11:10 in the morning. How, how do you know that I, stuff? I remember this one. It was very <laughs> special. It weighed 13.3, and I caught it on a Crawdad Pro trap, which. The line would go through and had one treble hook. And when you get a good one on that rattle trap, it would go flying up the line 20 yards, man. It was wild. <laughs> You're starting to date yourself. <laughs> yeah, but that half ounce, that half ounce, any type of red, any type of orange, you got to have it in the boat before you put the boat in the water. Rattle trap bass! Rattle trap bass! You came right through there with that other thing I you had. Did, I came Woo. That's, good that's fish, how they're boy. that's how they're supposed to eat that rattle trap. Wait Just... for that thing to come flying out of his <laughs> mouth my face. Give me my rattle trap bass. You gotta show the camera. Tell me you didn't want that thing. That thing is gone. That is cool. Those chunky females really like. Look at that. She's trying to get trying to get a groove on chunky chunk rattle traps baby when throwing the rattle traps I really like to use a, a, a softer rod this is a CLC-5-176 T7 Terra from Falcon Rods and it's got a little bit of give it's got a nice bow so when they, that bass comes up and grabs that bait and she turns that rod will whoa, kind of bow to her a little bit let her finish the strike, move in a different direction, and then the hooks grab. The rod loads up, a little bit of stretch. I use 15 pound strand brute strength line, or if the fish are really shallow, then I'll, <coughs> excuse me, then I'll go with 20 pound. With the 20 pound line, it keeps the bait up. It doesn't vibrate as well with 20. With 15, 14 or 15 pound test, you get a lot more action out of the bait. The line diameter doesn't rob a lot of the action out of the bait. But like I say, if those fish are in two or three feet of water and I'm fishing really fast, then I'll use 20 pound test monofilament and that'll get the job done. Hey Bob, what, I get guys asking me all the time, you, you watch the shows on the, on the Delta, you watch fishing shows uh, on TV out for the Delta and guys are using braid or guys are using fluorocarbon. And when I fish with you, you pick mono, which is what you just explained. Why don't you tell guys why you don't use braid? I, you know, the braid, we don't have a lot of grass out here in March. There's sporadic grass. We used to have a lot of grass. When we had a whole lot of grass, then I would use 50 pound braid. Uh, that, you know, cause you could pop it, pop it and it would pop out of the grass. And by the end of the day, eight, eight nine hours after doing this with monofilament, popping it out of the grass, you're gonna be this, you're gonna be the dead dog. Okay. But with 50, you can pop it. It's got the line diameter of about 10 pound test, pop and it comes out clean. The reason I don't like braid if I can get away with mono, I will use mono. Okay. The reason I don't like braid is because sometimes it just makes me a little bit too quick. Okay. I get that bite and I instantly jerk because it, 
That bite on a rattle trap, that bite on a spinnerbait, anything you throw with braid subsurface, when you get that bite, it just, it's like that. It okay. feels, it's so much more intense with braid than it is with monofilament. With monofilament, the strike, it's a more deadened strike, it's a more natural strike, and you, you just react accordingly. But a lot of times, especially with braid, if you haven't been bit for an hour or two, and you get that first bite, you almost always jerk and pull it right away from the fish. Okay. So that's why I don't so use So mono, if you can get away with it, braid, heavy grass, yep. you try to avoid it if you can. You bet. Awesome. Let's go do it again. All right. Uh-oh. Wrong species. <laughs> No, that is the right species. Oh, you just didn't think that was, that's a good one, bud. Look at this guy. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh. You got her? Dog guns, Dick. I'm gonna get you up here, bud. That's got it. Awesome. I think. Dude, that was... I think that's why they put six hooks on these things, because I got her with... This one wasn't connected. I got her with that one little bitty hook right there. Let me show that camera that. That is awesome. Look at that. Got her with that one little bitty hook. All right, Bobby. If you don't mind, can you break down exactly how we're fishing that bait today? I mean, you're throwing it into toolies, and I, I've thrown spinner baits, swim baits, hollow belly baits through toolies. You're throwing a rattle trap with treble hooks through these sparse toolies and, and catching those giants like that. It, that's unbelievable. It, you know, like that one right there, that last fish we just caught, um, I'm, I'm just kind of walking that thing through the toolies, and the, and the problem that a lot of people have is they throw over there and they see it getting into the toolie and they start to reel it real fast and those treble hooks bend that toolie over it and they grab. That's so, what happens to me. <laughs> yeah, so when you're coming up there, the nose of that bait, as soon as it bumps the toolies, you'll be able to feel that up and you'll just kind of ease up and just kind of just kind of pump and pump it through. That's exactly what I did right there. I bumped the toolie, right. the, tra the rattle trap hesitates for a second and then starts back and that's when she grabbed it. That is awesome. As soon as that, it dropped and then it as soon as it started again, she probably watched that thing and it, that crawdad was getting away, she grabbed it. So guys that are watching this right now, if they want to go out and practice, I'm one of those guys that like, I'm going to watch a technique on TV, I'm going to watch it on fishdelta.com like right now and I want to go out and apply it. Where do I start? I mean. You're, you're targeting pretty tight, dense toolie pockets, but I know I wouldn't start there. You're gonna start out with a little more sparse, bump off stuff, you're probably gonna get hung up. How does a guy take this bait and practice doing what we're doing? What do they need to look for? Where do they start before they start getting into that really heavy, heavy cover? You know, that that's a great question. It, I get back to it again. You guide a lot, I guide a lot, you know? And a lot of times the guys wanna get in the boat and they want you to make them a superstar. Right. And the thing is, the guys at home, the way you can help us make you a superstar, or you can be a superstar in front of your buddy or your wife or your kid, work on the mechanical game right. of fishing. Bait presentation, learn how to pitch, learn how to throw underhand. We got a pretty brisk breeze today. You gotta keep the bait low. Keep it low, Get generate some speed, but the only way that's gonna happen is if you spend some time at home, you know, put your iPad down for a little bit or <laughs> get off the computer for a little bit, uh, unless you're on fish delta but uh and grab the dog's dish put it in the backyard grab a milk crate stand on top of that so you've got to be elevated above the cement a little bit about about that far about you know almost the the height of a the deck of a boat and learn how to pitch right. into that dog dish or if you've got a swimming pool put up a little ring or a ring you know and learn how to hit that spot from 12 yards 16 yards, 20 yards, get close to that. Presentation is huge, especially here in Clear. Right. If you're on Lake McClure, if you're on Lake Shasta and there's a point that comes out and you got a little four or six inch worm, you throw it out there, it really doesn't matter where it lands sometimes. Those fish can see it going down and they'll go over there and get it. 
Out here, everything's tight. Like that fish right there, we got a little bit of flow going through those tulies. And it was the last tule. I mean, there's about 20 tulies right there. I threw it the last tule. Came through, I felt it grab, I hesitated, and then boom, that's when she grabbed that it. Awesome. At first, I thought it was a striper. And then we saw her belly, <laughs> like that one over there earlier today. Yeah. I think, now I'm thinking, hmm, that might have been a big largemouth too. Wow. But we've caught, you know, we've caught them from this big to that big with that rattle trap. And like, you know, like I'm saying, you know, everybody wants to try and get their kids a bite. And it's one of the best ways to do it. Maybe not put them in a bunch of sparse tulies, but as the season progresses, this is March right now, January, February, March, and the first part of April is some of the greatest time to throw a rattle trap. And then again, September, October, November, right on through December. But, uh, and a lot of that's dictated by the amount of weeds that you're dealing with. So it's a great search bait. It's a great bait for you to go out and, and get your kids some bites with it. And uh, maybe the kids will catch a couple of giant ones too. Awesome. Yep. You let's ready try to do catch it? another one. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Go, girl! <laughs> oh, I got another one with one hook. <laughs> oh, don't shake, you turkey. Oh, nice. Look at that, I got another one with one hook in her nose. Woo! <laughs> that is awesome. I'll tell you what, with the old school rattle trap, with the hooks they used to have in these things, no way. But with these new hooks that they've got in that rattle trap, I'll tell you what, yeehaw. I love springtime rattle trap fishing. That's how you get it done. Look at that big old belly on that thing. That fish's belly is almost as big as mine. Oh, did you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> you son of a gun. Oh boy. You Dude, did can, it you net, can you can you net her, Nate? I can. Net her. Net her. That's a good fish. There you go. <laughs> I hate netting rattle trap <laughs> fish, but dude, it is game <laughs> on. Let's do this. Holy moly. <laughs> I let's catch some rattle trap fish. Forget the camera, I, let's throw. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was a lot bigger than that. That's a good fish, though. That is an awesome. Oh, look oh. at this one. You didn't one hook her. She ate that, boy. You didn't one hook her at all. Come here, you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at that poor fish. There's, buddy, there's no skin hook on that one. <laughs> it's gone. She freaking ate it. Bobby, we need to wrap this day up, and I got to tell you, I learned, I learned a ton. I've always taken rattle traps, lipless crankbaits, and thrown them down rock banks, ripping them out of the grass. Yeah. And you came out today, and you showed me throwing them in toolies, throwing them in the middle of cover. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's uh, it's such a versatile bait, and you know, it's got rattle traps got a billion colors, right? So just figure out what the forage is that the fish are eating on your lake, whether it's, you know, Lake Murray in South Carolina, where it's the blueback herring or whatever it may be. Uh, gizzard shad, they got all the colors. Right now, they're kind of keyed in on crawdads, you know, reddish, reddish brown. Uh, so we're using the 46R and the uh, red and, and all that. And, and then they'll go to chrome and blue, chrome and blue with a little orange on the belly. Uh, fire tiger, you know, if the water's got some stain to it. So play with your colors. All the colors are, they're out there, they got a they got a million of them. And uh, I like the half ounce for this time of the year when I'm fishing shallow. Okay. The three quarter ounce, if they're really charged up and they're really chasing, throw that three quarter and burn that joker back. And that's a real good time too. What I'm gonna ask of you, and I know you'll do it for me, but what I'd like you to do is can you put together an article for me? I'm gonna I'm gonna put this video up. I'm gonna take the article, I'm gonna put it up exactly what we did so guys can get a list of the baits, the lines, the rods that you yeah. use in an application like yeah. this so they can watch it, but they also get all the details. It's just hard to pick it up on video. Yep. I know I'm that guy. Would you do that for me? We'll do that. All right. Hey, thanks for doing that for me. I appreciate <coughs> Good it. Good times. You guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Look for that article. It'll be up in the article section and we'll be right back uh, with another episode shortly, huh? You bet. Maybe, maybe burning a three-quarter ounce rattle trap. We can do that. <laughs> all right. Have fun, guys. <laughs>